हेलो वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू चैप्टर थ्री ट्रांसफर प्राइजिंग प्रोसेस ऑफ ऑनलाइन ट्रांसफर प्राइजिंग कोर्स यू आर लिसनिंग टू सी ए गौरव गर्ग इन दिस वीडियो ट्यूटोरियल आई विल गोइंग टू गिव यू ब्रीफ ओवरव्यू ऑफ हाउ टू कैरी आउट ट्रांसफर प्राइजिंग एक्सरसाइज और वट ऑल स्टेप्स आर इंक्लूडेड ब्रॉडली इन द ट्रांसप्राइजिंग असाइनमेंट and this video tutorial will going to act as a platform for all of us to discuss our further chapters in detail so this is a kind of a uh, summary or a birds eye view which uh, of the topics that will going to cover in future so the only agenda in this video tutorial is to discuss transfer pricing process so here is the transfer pricing process in front of your screen you can follow these following steps in order to start a transfer pricing assignment and finish the transfer pricing assignment there could be more steps or these steps can be further one can you know broke into more steps but based on my experience i feel broadly we can divide this transfer pricing process into nine steps so the first step is understanding business second understanding industry third is identification of control transaction fourth is understanding control transaction fifth identification of internal comparable sixth identification of external comparable seventh transfer pricing method eighth computation of alp and ninth documentation so in this video tutorial we're going to discuss very briefly each step and then in the future video tutorials we're going to have more elaborate discussion on all, all this process so the first comes understanding business so when your when client comes to you or when tax payer comes to you for a transfer pricing what to do how to start or from where to start so the first thing which you need to understand is the business business of your client and business not only of your client but the business of the group to which the client belongs and also how your client or the tax payer is fitting in the overall value chain of the group so this step will give you broad overview of what your client is doing second comes understanding industry so how the industry operated during the year whether there was upward trend there is a growth or there is a downward trend who all are the key players in the industry and all the important conditions in the industry which might have impact on your client and third step comes identification of control transaction so you need to open the law open your transparency regulation first of all read according to law what all transactions can be regarded as a controlled transaction when i say controlled transaction it means transaction between associated enterprises on which transfer pricing provisions are applicable and tax payer needs to justify to the tax authorities that transaction is at arms length so this is the third step so after first two steps when you move on to the third steps you will know the significance of the transaction whether the control transaction in which assessee has entered whether it is a significant transaction or a very small transaction in comparison to the overall business if it is a significant transaction you can use the overall profit and loss account of the tax payer in order to understand this transaction better if it is only a small part of the transaction of the small part of the overall business of your client then why this transaction was entered during the year so each the volume of a transaction will have impact on the analysis and also the materiality once you are sure that these are the transactions which you need to analyze and which the tax payer needs to prove to the tax authorities that transaction that these transaction uh, transactions are at arm length 
then comes understanding those control transactions more deeply. And one of the very important thing when I say understanding is uh, you will you will you will heard you know FAR, F A R, functional asset and risk analysis. In understanding control transactions broadly, what is the nature of transaction, pricing terms, and as I said, F A R. So F A R is very important stuff. We are going to discuss in the future tutorials what is F A R, functional asset and risk analysis. This basically de defines what your taxpayer is doing, what your associated, what associated enterprise of your taxpayer is doing. So we one needs to analyze the value chain under this uh, understanding control transaction more deeply. Then the fifth step comes identification of internal comparables. Broadly one can have two kind of comparables. One is the internal comparable and second is the external comparable. Comparable means, you know, as I said earlier uh, in the earlier video tutorials that the, in, in arm's length principle or under the arm's length regulation in order to justify that I am dealing with my associated enterprises in an arm's length uh, condition, uh, broadly what I need to do, I need to find out some third party transaction and then compare it. So I can have internal comparable means either I have entered into comparable transaction with some third party or my group company or my associated enterprise has entered into comparable transaction with some third party. So we can find the terms and condition of those transactions and then compare it with the transaction uh, that uh, your taxpayer has entered with the associated enterprise. If internal comparables are not available then you move on to identify external comparable. So the quality of external comparable is generally not very good in comparison to internal comparables. So the first preference is given to internal comparable and then we move on to find out the external comparable. In external comparable we look for databases or we look for the transactions entered by between two independent third parties and they, they do not belong to a group. So generally it becomes tough to find a transaction level details when you move on to identification uh, when you move on to external comparable. So based on the practical experience I understand when somebody moves on to external comparable generally the benchmarking is done on profitability level except when the transaction pertains to royalty or interest or when the you know uh, the commodity when, when, when you are dealing in a commodity and that commodity is listed on some exchange. The seventh step comes identification of method or selecting most appropriate method or the best method. So there are five methods available and then there are certain residue method depending upon country to country but broadly there are five transfer pricing method. First is comparable and controlled price method. Second is resale price method. Third is cost plus method. Fourth is profit split method. And fifth is transactional net margin method. So out of these five method, which, which method is the most appropriate for your given circumstance? So if you have three transactions, you may find a case that you, you may apply three different methods to justify your three different transactions. And sometime year to year also, you may find different methods depending upon the availability of data. So once we are sure on identification of comparables and selecting most trans, most appropriate trans pricing method to justify transaction with associated enterprises, we compute arm's length price. And this computation of arm's length price is for the purpose of tax, income tax that you need to pay to the tax authority. So whatever the price comes, you will replace this price and uh, the, the transaction value, you will replace the transaction value with this arm's length price which you have computed in this step. And when you document all these steps, it becomes your trans pricing document which is called documentation. So document or trans pricing study is very very important thing. And one needs to have very robust documentation to prove to the tax authorities. Before you reaches or before you go to the tax authorities, this transpricing study 
or transferring document goes to the tax authorities. So in future slides or in, in the video tutorial that will that I will going to upload in coming weeks, uh, I will have more discussion on all these processes. Before I close my video tutorial, I have success mantra for you. And this success mantra is given by Saint Ramana Maharishi. And he says, no one succeeds without effort. Those who succeed owe their success to perseverance. Means if you really want to get success in life or success in any assignment or in any project, you need to put efforts and if you see life of any successful person you will find that they have actually given a lot of efforts and they have made continuous efforts to get that success so friends my suggestion based on saint ramana maharishi is that everything is achievable if you are ready to put effort for the same and that to continuous efforts thank you And at the end, if you have any question with regard to this video tutorial, feel free to send me a WhatsApp or an email. Uh, I hope you are liking the video tutorials and slowly and slowly as we move forward, it will going to add value to all of you. My contact details, my mobile number 9899994 and if you are sending me whatsapp from outside india do add my country code plus nine one and my email id is gaurav g a u r a v at j garg dot com j g a r g dot com thanks and bye for now